back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today, I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time, which is how to deal with paper clutter as a minimalist and someone who's trying to stay decluttered in their lives. I did a full video before on showing how I decluttered all of my paper products and I will link that down below, but I've had so many questions on exactly how I deal with paper clutter and I'm going to try to answer that today. You can find all this information on my blog as well, shannontorrens.com, and if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. Let's get started. The first thing I do is I try to deal with paper clutter immediately. So the second that I get my mail, I go straight over to the recycling bin and anything that is not important or just junk mail, that goes straight into the recycling bin. So I don't have to think about it. I personally do not look through mailers or coupons or magazines or any kind of flyer. I just don't need the information. If I haven't looked at it myself, that means I probably don't need to be looking at it. So I just put that straight into the recycling bin and that way it's dealt with as quickly as possible. Another tip I have is to go online and look up the rules for your state country on what you actually need to keep for your records. Where I live, we have to keep seven years of back taxes. Ours are all printed out. I know there's probably ways to do it digitally. We have ours printed out. That's just how we keep them. They're actually not that big for us. It probably takes up about that much room. And what I do is when our new year of taxes comes in, I just take that seventh year ago and I just get rid of that. So I usually shred it and then recycle it. This is how our taxes come in a folder. This is how small it is, it's that thin. So I have seven of these and I just take out the oldest one and put in the new one every year and they're labeled with the year and it's pretty easy. So you can see how seven of these do not take up that much space. Another thing that I usually keep is my first bill, my water bill and trash bill, those kind of things, just the first or one of them. So I have all the information and then I normally don't keep bills after that because they can usually be found online and I just don't see the point. I've never had to reference many bills in the past, but I do like to keep at least one so that way I can see all the information and um, if I have to call them for some reason, I have all the account numbers and everything written down. Another thing I like to do, which really cuts down on the amount of paper coming in and paper clutter is to pay as many bills online as possible. So I pretty much pay every single bill online. I get sent an email with the bill instead of paper and then I just pay it and I know I can log into that account and get those bills at any time. If you're worried about keeping backup records, you can always download those PDFs usually and then save them into a folder each month uh, organized by month and year. Um, I personally don't even do that because I've never had a problem finding them in the past, just going on to the website, but that's another way to just cut down on the amount of paper that is coming into your home. The other thing I do is I keep all of the papers that I'm storing in one area. It's in my office, it's all in one room, so I'm not having paper clutter in the kitchen, in the kids' room, I have it all in one room, and really that helps me see exactly how much I have, and helps me to find things when I'm looking for it, so even if you can only do one thing, I would suggest taking every piece of paper you have, putting it in a box, and putting it into one bedroom, so that way you have a really good idea of what you're working with and it's also so much easier to find things. Before we started to become more minimal and declutter, I had a full file cabinet. It was a huge two drawer file cabinet, one of those big metal ones where the drawer comes all the way out and it was full, I'm gonna tell you. I, I mean, I could not even fit any more paper in there and all that's in that video that I talked about, I will link below, but I was able to go through all of that and get everything to fit in this one file box. This is it. I have a hanging folder and then in each hanging folder I just write down, you know, whatever it is and put it in there. And this is everything we have. Um, it's not 
beautiful because honestly it doesn't really matter and I don't want to be wasteful getting new folders every year so this is what it looks like this does not include our back taxes but again like I said that's in a drawer that's takes up about that much space so this is everything I file my suggestion and what I do is to go through your file cabinet or a box often and get rid of what you don't need. I know a lot of people scan everything, have everything on their computer. I personally like to have at least one copy of a few things in my file box so I can find it very easily because there are times when I can't get my computer to turn on or there's something going on with the cable or the internet or the electricity. So anyway, I personally like to have a copy with my information on at least one piece of paper with the information written down. I also never usually keep manuals for any appliances that I have because I find all of that information is really easy to find online. The only manual that I keep is my car manual and I keep it in my car because there have been so many times where a light blinks on or something happens in the car and I wanna be able to look it up really quickly and it really comes in handy to have the car manual in the car. And I also try to unsubscribe from all mailers and everything that I can that comes in the mail. I try to have as little mail as possible. With all the unsubscribing I've done, I usually get mail every other day and it's normally one little flyer. For kids projects that are coming in daily from school, if it's an informational piece of paper, I usually transfer that information into my planner, onto my calendar, and then I recycle that paper. If the paperwork is a school project or something that the boys have done, I try to deal with that immediately as well. What I have been doing is making a pile of papers that they are proud of and they like, and we're keeping those for a while. Sometimes I'll hang them up, but we do get a lot. And the ones that I know are just something that they learned in school that they're not going to need anymore. It was just a worksheet. Usually I will recycle those quite quickly and um, get rid of them pretty quickly because like I said, those papers are coming home. We're talking three to four every day. So usually I recycle those right away, but anything that's more of a project that they've put together, I will usually save those and then have the boys go through their projects. If they want to pull a few out, we will keep them for a while. And then later in the year, I will probably go through those again with them to whittle it down to a very small amount because something is very important in the beginning when they bring it home and then as time goes on, it usually just does not matter to them at all. I pulled out these items because I think that we can revisit these in the summer. So I will probably keep these until he starts next year and then that way we can read through these books and stay up to date with, with what he needs to know. Um, and then I will probably end up recycling all of this unless he wants to keep these books that he made. But my goal is to have one binder that they can have of all their projects that are really good from their whole school career. I think by saving one to about five really great projects from each year, they can look back and enjoy everything they have and then when they get older they can take that and do whatever they want with it. Um, anything that they make for me I usually keep because I just love it um, but again that goes into my souvenir box that I have one bin and whatever can fit in there is what I keep. Anything that can't fit in there I start decluttering. That is how we deal with our papers and I know it's different for everyone. I'm sure people will have tons of suggestions in the comments down below. So if you're looking for more suggestions or you wanna leave a suggestion, just put it in the comments down below. And I personally love the system that we've come up with. It's perfect for us. I'm happy that I don't have to have a huge file cabinet. The number one tip, in my opinion, is just to deal with paper clutter as quickly as possible. Go through it as soon as it comes into your house and try to recycle it before you have a big pile and it gets overwhelming. I know a lot of this seems obvious, but I hope this helped to answer your questions about how we deal with paper clutter. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of videos on minimalist tips and becoming minimal, decluttering. Um, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye.